Well, hey, good morning, it's Pastor Matt. I am the pastor of Creative and Worship here at Fellowship Bible Church. We've got a great service this morning. Our kids are coming right front and center. You're gonna get to see them, uh, both those that are here in the building and also some great videos that we captured of our kids that are remaining safe at home. And so we want you to enjoy this service. There'll be a great teaching today. At the end, I'm gonna come back for a few more announcements, but for now, Take a look at our awesome, beautiful, amazing kids, the message, and then I'll be back at the end. What an amazing morning already, huh? I mean, we could go home right now. You had amazing worship, the kids up there, this incredible video. And again, I know we've said it a couple of times. I want to give a huge thanks to Candace and her team uh, for what she's done, not just with this program here, but this whole year. Uh, this is not the year we expected. She's been our children's director for this past year. And uh, I, I know that she has worked really, really hard on, on so many levels. So please flood her Facebook uh, with some big thanks uh, this week. She really, really deserves that. Well, last year, um, I spoke for the very first time this exact same weekend. I was the newest guy on staff at that point. And uh, now that honor goes to our young adults pastor, Ben Good. And uh, in case you're new around here, my name is Jeff Davidson. I'm the student pastor. And in case you're wondering what that is, uh, I kind of give direction and oversight for kids and youth, uh, just kind of the vision of what we're trying to do and accomplish here. Well, during my first few months here, I used to come up and I used to tell you guys that uh, good morning and all those things. And I would tell you how many days that I've been here. So today is my 469th day on staff. And so... I, I know that doesn't sound super impressive, but this sounds more impressive. 200 days pre-COVID and 269 days in our current pandemic. And so, so in case you're newer than me, I'd love for you just to kind of wave at me. Or anybody newer than me than in this place? You guys have been coming new? Hey, great, awesome. And if you're online and you've been coming new, why don't you give a little smiley face out there or maybe write down how long that you've been coming here. You don't have to have the days, maybe months or something like that. Well, I have the incredible privilege of kicking off this Christmas series. We are calling this series Hope. The hope that Jesus brings was promised through the prophets thousands of years ago and is still producing hope in people today. The hope that we feel by knowing that God is close to us and the hope that he is actively speaking in our circumstances and ultimately that hope shows up. So join us each and every Sunday in this unique Christmas season. So the month, uh, this month we're asking this question, what are you hoping for this Christmas? I know this word might feel uh, very, very hard, especially thinking about this week. Um, we had a lot of snow. We had 19 inches of snow at my house. And so some of you might have been hoping to be able to say, I hope the snow stops. Or maybe there were students out there saying, I hope the snow keeps going so I can miss one or two days of school. Many of us saying, I hope our electricity comes back on. Who was without electricity this week? Yeah, a lot of us. The church was too. Some of you were hoping, will the, the electricity stay on? And some of us were hoping that we had AA batteries in our house. Well, at least that was in our house that was going on. But many of us might just hope for 2020 to be over. Nine months of this pandemic can get to the best of us? Or could we possibly just get a mulligan on this year? Because we all had high hopes of what 2020 was gonna look like, a year of, of vision, a year of clarity that 2020 was gonna bring. I remember preaching last year, again, at this time, I preached this exact message called Wonderful Counselor. And I talked about my year of 2013, that it was one of the roughest years of, of my life. If you have a chance, you can go to the archive messages and catch those first seven minutes to be able to hear about that story. But 2020, I think, was trying to rival that uh, 20th, 2013. It was giving it some stiff competition. So as I began to, uh, to prepare for this particular message, I started thinking about the definition of hope. Now, I know that many of you probably have not been reading your dictionary during this pandemic, or maybe you have that dictionary.com app that you look at daily. But I found that the word hope, uh, when you look it up, it can be used in a couple of different ways. Hope as a verb, is, it says this. Well, first of all, some of you have been teaching school to your kids, so maybe you know this now. 
A verb is a word that expresses action or a state of being. So hope, as a verb says, to look forward to with desire and reasonable confidence or to believe, desire, or trust. But then when we saw hope as a noun, it brings on a whole other meaning. Listen to this. It says hope as a noun is a person or a thing that may help or save someone. Now that hope has a name. And that hope is a person. And for us, that hope is Jesus. And that's the greatest hope to our world. That's a good time to shout. And you can be excited about that. That's, that's a pretty amazing thing that God has done for us. Now definitions, I'll tell you what, they look great on paper. And they even look really good on those big screens that we have up there. But it comes to a whole different level when you have to apply it into real life. Let me explain to you. So a few years ago, uh, we were taking a team to Nicaragua. I had a building team that we were going to build two houses and we were going to do some ministry uh, around the outskirts of Managua. And we learned the day before our, la our last training day that, uh, we, that there was some unrest that was going on in Nicaragua. And, and we found out that there was a really good chance that the U.S. government was going to pull out the U.S. embassy families. Well, if that happened, it means that we were not going to be able to bring our team in. Well, that did happen, and we had no place to go with this team. So I quickly started calling and emailing some of my friends, trying to find something for this team to be able to go and do. It was a really talented team that was ready to go do some, some hard work. And, uh, and emailing my friends and calling, I had a friend that came through in a really big way. He found this church that was, or found this ministry called Teen Challenge that was in Costa Rica, that, had a, that made a decision that they wanted to build a church in their community that would help them, but also for all these guys that would graduate their program, they could bring their families and be a part uh, of this church and be able to do something great in their community. And so they were praying and they were fasting, and guess what? We became the answer to their prayers. As I began to talk to, talk to the pastor, we realized that we were going to have to raise about another $11,000 to be able to do this. Now, we only had 35 days to be able to do that, but I, I agreed with the pastor. I said, let's try. Let's see what God can do in this season. And so I got the team praying, and I got my graphic designer and my web person together, and we came up with this great idea called Join the Story. And we were going to make these set of boxes, 1 to 150. If you filled in all the boxes, $1, $2, $3, the whole way up to 150, it would equal $11,174. Just trust me on that one. You don't have to add it all up. That's exactly what it does, $11,174. And so what happened next shocked me, though. It just blew me away. And so the first two days, some people were filling in some boxes and, and giving us some donations online. And then the third day, I get a text from, from a friend of mine. He goes, I don't understand your box thing, but I'd like to give you a $5,000 matching fund. And so I was like so excited about what, uh, what God was trying to do in this. I got to uh, have some more contributions come in. Sunday, I got to speak at a church, and I had this woman come up to me and say, I don't have a lot of money, but I have some friends, and I'm going to get the word out for you. Well, that night, we had more donations come in, another 150, another 250, another 75. Well, we continued to pray, and, and, and God just kept showing up. Monday morning happened, I got a phone call from somebody who says, I want to give $2,000. And then another card in the mail came for 500, and then another 125, and then another 150. And so all this happened, and in a week's time, I was at uh, the Solon First Watch with my web designer, and we were starting to add in all the, all the boxes. We were at $9,000 in one week. And so we were ready to make this great update of $9,000 coming in, filling in these boxes, and an email came in, and we opened up the email, and $2,000 came in on that, one, on that one email. I was so excited, I threw my hands up in the air, and I just began to thank God in the middle of, of Solon First Watch, if you've ever been that place. And uh, the waitress hurry up and she came over to me. She goes, is everything okay? I'm like, no, it's more than okay. I, we just raised $11,000 in a week. And it was just the most amazing experience. And I'm so thankful every time I think about that moment. So here we are today. 
And what we find out about hope, the things we need to know about hope is this. Hope needs to manifest when life isn't making sense. I didn't know why God didn't allow us to go to Nicaragua, but I found out that there was a bigger purpose, that he needed us to go to Costa Rica and to build this church. We've all experienced hopeless times, probably many in this year alone. We have well-meaning people a lot of times on our Facebook that are saying, I'm praying for you and hoping the best for you in your circumstances. But how do you have hope when everything around you feels hopeless? Today we're going to look at this passage. It's in Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 25. But before we do this, we, we need to set up this story. I'm actually going to take a drink because we're going to do this really, really fast and you got to stick with me. So Zechariah, okay, this is set up to this story. So Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, Mary's cousin, was in the temple all right, he was in the, in the holy parts and he was being able to hear from God and the angel Gabriel came to him and said, don't be afraid. But he was, and so would have you if an angel would have showed up, I know that. Angel Gabe told him this amazing news that he would have this amazing son that would basically be the setup man for the Messiah. Zachariah responds, says, I've always wanted to be a dad, but I'm old, my wife's old. So if this is true, can you send me a sign, all right, to, to I know that it's true? So Angel Gabe says, um, God sent me. You don't believe me. You, don't wanna, you want a sign? Okay, here's your sign. You want a sign? I'll give you a sign. You're not going to speak, all right? Here, take this sign with you. You're not going to speak until your baby is born. So he leaves the temple. He goes out to talk, you know, to the people who want to hear what, what God said. He can't speak, so he's like, like, it just didn't make sense, all right? So meanwhile, back at the ranch, Zechariah goes home. Elizabeth becomes pregnant, and she doesn't have to listen to Zechariah for several months, which might be the miracle that she was hoping for. Well, six months later, Mary comes to visit Elizabeth, her cousin. And on the way, Angel Gabriel speaks to Mary and says, God has found great favor on you. And she was a teenager. So love on those teenagers. I'll tell you, they're amazing people that we have here at our church. God uses teenagers in a great way. And you will give birth to the Messiah, the greatest gift ever. But she says, but I'm a virgin. And Gabe says, but don't fear. And she didn't, all right? The Holy Spirit has this all sorted out. So Mary goes to see her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, and she stays there for three months. Elizabeth has her son, and then everyone's flipping out because shouldn't this be named baby Zachariah? And everyone's looking at Zachariah and saying, what do you think? Don't you think it should be baby Zachariah? And he's like, it's John. I can speak now. His name is gonna be John. I was really excited about doing this. You guys didn't give me enough love on, on my artwork here. So this was not done by my kids. This was my own personal. All right, never mind. Okay. So he can speak now. The whole area finds out, the whole region finds out what's going on, and they're amazed. So Mary goes home. It's three months later. Remember, she's already, like, technically married to Joseph. They just haven't had their ceremony yet. All right, and now she explains the whole thing to Joseph. And so here we are now, okay, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. You wouldn't have got that story by reading the first verses of that because it's the whole genealogy of, of what happens. You have to look around to get all that. So here we are. Joseph is trying to process all this information that's just been given to him. He's feeling hopeless in this crazy story that just doesn't seem believable. Why? Because I think that he just wants to be married and have a carpenter business and start a family someday. Not this scenario that he's confronted with. So let's look at this passage now of how Joseph found, uh, what, uh, what Joseph found hope when he felt extremely hopeless. Are you guys still with me? Everyone still with me? Okay. Yes? You guys get quiet sometimes with me and I'm just like, I'm excited. I just need a little bit more excitement from you guys. Okay. Here we go, Matthew 1, 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she found 
uh, to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man, full of integrity, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Verse 20. But as he considered these things. Let's think about that for a second. This felt like a hopeless scenario for Joseph. His bride-to-be, pregnant, not his, heard from her that was from the Holy Spirit. She was gone for three months. You know what? This story makes a great little Bible story with pictures, but imagine that you're living this out. You're the one living out this story. It's a hard decision. It's a hard decision he had to make. And everything I read about this decision, it was not a decision of should I stay or should I go, but it was a decision of should I let her go publicly or privately in this. And so then, verse 20, but as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived from her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and his name is Jesus, and he uh, will save his people from their sins. Now remember the noun version of hope, a person that may save someone. And this is so good. All this took place to fulfill uh, what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall, con uh, shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel. God is with us. I really feel like Joseph makes sure that he had that scripture around all the time when people were asking him, why did you end up staying with her? Hey, do you know your Bible? You know, I'm able to throw that verse, that prophetic word. Well, when Joseph woke up from the sleep, he did not, uh, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. No questions asked. This situation, I know it seemed, felt crazy, Again, imagine being in a real time. And we all face difficult situations in life. But how you process and how you respond is so important. So today, I want to say that you are not alone when you feel like hope is lost. And I want to give you three quick ways to be able to have hope when all feels hopeless. The first one is this. Make up your mind. There is power in a made-up mind. Decide today that there is nothing that will keep you from experiencing all that God has for you. Once Joseph had that dream, experience with the angel, he took Mary to be his wife. He never looked back, and knowing that life was not going to be easy, especially that first 80-mile journey he had to take with his pregnant wife to go to Bethlehem. Well, when I traveled uh, for my college, um, I got to be on a drama team for my, for my school. It was the most amazing time that, I've, that I had. And we got to go to this Christian rehab program. And we had a service that we were going to do for them. And so instead of doing worship, they have this thing that they, that they love to do. It was my first time ever experiencing this. But uh, this guy gets up, and he starts to break out into this song. All right? Aaron made me sing this today, so I'm going to do it for you guys. All right. <clears throat> he would get up and goes, I got my mind made up and my heart is fixed. I'm going with Jesus all the way. And then all the guys would go, he got his mind made up and his heart is fixed. And he's going with Jesus all the way. And then he'd call out another guy's name, Bill. And Bill would stand up. I got my mind made up and my heart is fixed. I'm going with Jesus all the way. And they did that for all 20 guys that were there. It was incredible because these were not the, the singers. They would not be the guys to be singing up in your choir, all right? These are rough guys going through a lot, a lot of hard times, but they made up their mind that they were going to go with Jesus. They made a decision that said, no matter what, I'm going to go with Jesus all the way. And I'll tell you what, they even made us do it. And so when they called out our name, we had to sing it. We didn't have a choice. And so I was thinking about that. You know what? There's thousands, there's thousands of words that we say to ourselves each and every day. And most of them are negative. How have your talks been with yourself this season? 
this year of 20? How, how's your talks been? Do you encourage yourself or are you discouraging yourself? What if you were Joseph or Mary and all you said is, I just wanted to have a normal life. Just wanted to be married, have a few kids, take over my dad's carpenter business. It's not too much to ask. But sometimes, you know what? We can be our own worst enemy. And we say things like, I'm not worthy of God's love. I could never be the spiritual level of Pastor Aaron or Pastor Joe. Could God ever use someone like me? Could I ever lead a small group? Could I ever be in charge of a Bible study at my school and so on? I'm sure the pressure that Joseph and Mary felt were way harder than some of the ones that we've experienced. But we've got to make up our minds and say, I'm going to go with Jesus all the way, just like Joseph did. When Joseph said, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary to be his wife. I'm going to tell you today, we need to wake up. We need to make up our mind and follow Jesus. But you know what? Because he's got you, and he's for you, and he loves you. Some of you are listening to this today, and you're wishing that you had a different life. You're wishing that, that there was something that would be different in our lives. But I'm telling you, if you draw close to him and you make up your mind to serve him with all your heart, he will give you a new set of lenses on how you view your job, how you view your spouse, how you view your family, how you view your life. You have hope in him. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus. So what can you do? confess that you've lost hope. You'd be surprised how many Christians walk around uh, uh, with the denial of their situation. But you know what? God can open your eyes. If that hope is gone, or you feel like that dream has been fading in you, if you feel like you've lost that close relationship with him, choose to confess that to him today, even right now. If you're at home right now, you might want to take that time right now. You might need to call somebody today. You might need to face someone today to pray with you because you're not alone in this. Another thing I'd say is ask God to restore the joy of your salvation. Do you remember coming to Christ for the first time? Have you ever watched somebody? That's one of my favorite things when you see someone come to Christ for the first time. The joy that is in their life, uh, it just is contagious. And I want to say, but restore that for us, God. Restore the joy of our salvation. Because you know what Satan will try to do? Satan will do his best to try to steal your long-term memory and make you forget all the times that God was there for you. So make up your mind to follow him every single day. The second thing I'll say is this, is that we need to eliminate the competition. What consumes your time? What are the things that you're putting your hope for in front of God? There's a line that I've always heard. It says this, we judge ourselves by our intentions, but others judge us by our actions. I really feel that our intentions are really, really good. But our actions really, really tell the story. Maybe a better way to say that would be this. What derails you or what takes you off the trajectory, off your course? This has been a crazy year, and you hear that every day, but we truly need to decide how we use our time and who we put our hope in. So what are the things that are competing for your time? Maybe it's our relationships. If we're in one, maybe we're not in one. Or who is the one that is speaking into our life the most? Can we really rely on that solely? Or if we should be relying on God? Maybe it's our work or our finances that consume our thoughts. Maybe it's our routine that, that we're in. That we're in a routine that's, that, that doesn't have God in the forefront of it. We probably need to look at that again. Maybe it's our hobbies or how much time we spend on media that we have. I look at Joseph, man. Joseph was a righteous and just man. He had to remove the noise around, around him so that he could go, like in that verse 20, and consider and be able to have a, the, the angel that would show up. Man, that was a game changer for him. He had to get away. So to have hope when you feel hopeless, we need to make up our mind. We need to eliminate the competition. And third, we need to walk closely with God. James 4, 8 says, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Before I had Spotify, 
I used to listen to 95.5 The Fish a lot. How many, how many people still enjoy 95.5 The Fish? Uh, nothing negative to it. I just enjoy my Spotify, all right? Um, and so when I would go visit my dad, I would be listening to 95.5 The Fish. And as I cross over from Ohio into Pennsylvania, 95.5 The Fish turns from that into Froggy 95, this country music station. Now, some of you might not like country music, and, and don't, I'm, I'm not downing that at all. But the problem with this is that I didn't change the station. What changed was I was further away from my original source. And so when you get further away from God and you start listening to other voices and accepting those uh, words as the plan, you might not have changed the station, but your proximity to God has changed. This is when we need to get back to the source and we need to lean in and we need to tune into God. Here's another way I like to think about it. How many people have a dog? Anybody, any dog owners here? All right. We have a dog, her name is Hershey. I know it might seem like a weird name for you. That has to be a boy's name, but it has the word her and she in it, so we're just gonna go with it. She always loves to stay close to my wife. And she has this amazing ability, whoever she's with, that she can walk right beside you and touch your leg, like right here, the entire, I mean, you have a dog like that, that's just really, really good, not getting in your way, just I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm, just, I'm right beside you, wherever you go, I'm, not, I'm right here. And, uh, and what I've discovered is, is that whenever she wasn't around, one of two things was happening, all right? One is that she was leaving a present for us in another room, if you know what I mean, or two, she would be destroying something, typically one of these little Eos lip balms. She loves chewing on it. Anybody have a dog that eats the lipstick or the chapstick? Okay, we're by myself. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> but, uh, but aren't we the same way? When we're close to God and walking with him, enjoying his presence, we are completely on track and in tune with him. But as we pull away, our drift is when things start to unravel. Our desires, our decisions, and our focus. I want to tell you this, is that even sometimes in the good things, sometimes our problem is we pursue good things more than we pursue God. And he really wants us to know that we've got to pursue him first. There is so much that he wants to show you, but we need to get back to the basics. And we must pursue God and walk with him because he is for you. Joseph is a great example for us of a person that got in tune with God. And even though uh, through the seems, uh, uh, things that seemed hopeless, God gave him tremendous peace. In Romans 5, 1 through, uh, 1 through 5, it says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, and another version says this, it says, but that's not all. It's like a really good infomercial. But that's not all. But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into the hearts of the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So let's land this plane today. 2020 has been hard on all of us. We've all experienced hopelessness in one way or another. Distractions, opinions, hardships and conflict, questions, even on how we live our lives. But we must keep pressing into God. He will build attributes of confidence, of patience, of character, that leads us back to hope, our perfect hope, which is Jesus. I want you just to close your eyes for a second as we close. And I want you to take an inventory of your life. I want you to think about this. Is there something blocking 
your ability to have complete hope in God. Maybe there's a decision that you need to make. I want you to choose to make up your mind. Maybe there's a distraction that you need to let go of. I'm gonna encourage you to eliminate the competition. And maybe today you're someone here or at home and you're feeling distant from God. You know what he's saying to you? Walk closer to me. Lean in. And maybe today you're saying, you know what, I'm ready to make a full commitment to God. I would love to pray with you today. I wanted to believe with you that God has a tremendous plan for your life. There is hope. There is hope and hope has a name. His name is Jesus. God, I thank you so much for everybody that's here today. I thank you so much for everyone who may have been struggling in this past year. For those ones that right now are having to make a decision that seems really, really hard. It could be a really life-changing decision. I pray that you show up, Lord, and give them the peace to know that you're in control. Maybe there are things in our lives right now as a distraction. It might be one thing that's major. It could be a several, several of those things that we even listed. But if there's a distraction going on in your day, I want to encourage you to give it to Him. Eliminate that competition and let God be first in your life. Maybe today you're feeling distant from God. And you can tell that. You can, you can feel it. You just know I'm not where I used to be. If that's you, I just want to say, God, I want to put you first again. I want to make you first. I want to walk closely with you. I want to hear your voice. I want to be obedient to the things you've asked me to do. So God, I pray now for everyone this month, Lord, that we will be ones that are, ones that have hope and ones that that help bring others to the life-giving hope that only comes through you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being here today. I hope that you feel encouraged to be able to leave this place, to make some real practical decisions even this month before 2021 comes around, to be able to put God first in all that you do. We love you guys. We want to encourage you that if you haven't signed up for Jingle Jam, um, you can look at that or anything for the church going on. It's Christmas at chagrin.com. Sign up for that, and we will see you next Sunday. Thank you so much. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed that incredible message, the thrill of hope. And also, you got to see some of our kids cheesing, smiling, singing. A little dancing always happens. And so we're so glad that you joined us today during this Christmas season. If you feel so compelled to give, and today that's you, you can go over to our website, fellowshipcleveland.com click on the give button. If you want us to know a little bit more about you, you can do that as well by exploring our website and you can always send an email to info at fellowshipcleveland.com. On that site, you'll see a button for Christmas in Chagrin. Christmasinchagrin.com is all things Christmas. So we have a lot coming up. We have our family jingle jam, December 11th and 12th. You do have to register, but we can accommodate 50 families per session. Tickets are going fast, so you want to make sure to register. And then finally, Christmas Eve. What a great time to be together. Again, you have to register for that service. We have 4, 5.30 and 11 p.m. Just let us know. Again, this is not a hard thing to do, but we do need to know how many of you are coming so we can make sure to accommodate. Again, all things Christmas from our big Christmas service, December 20th, Christmas in Chagrin.com. Again, have a great day. Thanks for joining us online. We will see you next time.